Now to create our next toolpath, I want you to make sure that your pointer is down in our new toolpath group. And we're going to go to toolpaths, surface high speed. OK, any message that comes up about toolpath refinement. And it says to select your drive surfaces. Now I don't have these separated by color, so we're just going to pick these manually. I want to pick everything that goes around this fillet and then everything inside here. And don't be afraid to rotate it around and make sure you've got everything you need. So with all those selected, we're going to say End Selection. Now I also want to use a containment boundary. You can probably see that there's a green boundary that goes around that outside. Let's pick that and OK. Now for our toolpath type, we're going to start with a roughing cut and we're going to be doing an OptiRough. For our tool, we're going to start with this 3 quarter inch bullnose end mill. And for my comment, I'll just say 3D Surface Machine OptiRough. Now let's go take a look at our cut parameters. And the idea of the OptiRough is that we take a small step over and a big step down. So for my step over, I'm going to set this to about 10 percent. So that's a 75,000 step over and for my step down I'm going to change that to 60 percent. Then we want it to do a step up and what that's going to do is a smaller step in between. And for my step up I'm going to set that to 10 percent so it'll take 75,000 steps going up to clear off the profile. I want to do a micro lift in between cuts. We'll set that to 40 thousandths and a back feed rate of 300 inches per minute. Now there's a lot you can do with these 3D toolpaths. If you're not familiar with these, we have another CD that covers all the 3D surface toolpaths in greater detail. We're going to leave 50,000 stock on the walls and the floor. Next we're going to take a look at our tool containment and here I'm going to tell it that I want to stay inside of that boundary. I don't want it to go outside that boundary at all. One thing I always like to do when I'm doing this type of rotary and 3D surfacing work is I want to take a look at my planes and what you should see here is the work coordinate plane should be top and your tool plane and construction plane should be equal to whatever that new view was. And you could have given that view some kind of a name like uh, front 3D surface plane. I just went with the default name of New View 9. So if that looks good, we're going to say OK and let it generate our 3D toolpath to machine out that area on the face. And there's the roughing of that area.